All right, uh, my name is Howard Glenn. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'm a second year IMBA student here at the uh, University of South Carolina in Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, I've been working on a nonprofit startup with two of my closest friends from the Peace Corps, uh, which I was uh, serving in Costa Rica before coming to Columbia. The work that all three of us did while we were there, um, the three of us, the Peace Corps volunteers, the return Peace Corps volunteers that started WOTC, we all worked in uh, microfinance, which deals a lot with entrepreneurs. People that want to start businesses who have ideas but lack the capital, the necessary startup capital, or don't have the resources like a lot of us in the United States do, you know, friends and family that can help you with that $5,000 or, or whatever just to get your business off the ground, or, or maybe even, you know, get the concept on paper. For them, it's, it, it's, they have less opportunities. So what we worked on was uh, microfinance, which was uh, enabling the community to keep the profits within the community. So we would, uh, we would help start and support community banks in which local leadership would um, kind of run the organization and then everybody within the community would buy stock into the bank. So all local resources were used as capital for, for loans. So in turn, when each community member would take out a loan, say for uh, a machine that would help them milk their cows, they were able to get so much of a return off that because going from hand to machine was that much more of an exponential increase in profit that they were able to pay back that high interest rate. And that high interest rate went back to the community. So those other you know, members of the community were getting you know, 10, 15% off of their, their investment. Well, it was actually um, kind of funny. Uh, my buddy Chase was the one with the with the big vision. He kind of had the uh, the epiphany, if you will. Um, I don't know if you'd read the story going on on the website, but uh, Chase had had this epiphany on the bus in which he'd run into a woman who was able to collect all these funds on a on a bus where he's used to seeing beggars and not seeing anybody give anybody money. And then when he realized that this is for her son's medical treatment, he kind of kind of the light went off and he was like, if I could get my friends and family with this woman, we'd have that treatment funded in a day. So when he came back to, um, came back to Mark, uh, me and Mark about what the idea, we decided to, that we wanted to help. We wanted to help get it off the ground and do as much as possible to uh, see the idea into fruition. WOTC is an online peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform uh, <laughs> for um, organizations abroad, uh, medical organizations that lack access to um, or funding for medical procedures. Uh, specifically, we work with um, high impact, uh, low cost treatments. So anybody in the developing country who uh, lacks access to uh, kind of the low hanging fruit of healthcare. Uh, it was just, uh, ma mainly a desire for uh, or a need for funding. Um, we've we've always been kind of a lean startup. We that's one of our our big core values is don't spend any money unless we have to. So we wanted to get a minimally viable product out before we we did anything. So we use a a very lean budget of a thousand dollars to get to the point where we launched our website, and then we saw some success with the website, which was uh, allowed us to enter competitions like Proving Ground and the Global Social Venture Competition at um, University of California Berkeley. And those two business plan competitions, uh, we, we had enough success that we were able to raise a little bit more funds. And then uh, we were able to get into uh, Y Combinator, which has led to a lot of the, the larger press outlets like Wall Street Journal or, or Forbes, MCC, TechCrunch, Hacker News, things like that. Um, th th there's a lot of local resources that they've been really helpful with. Um, uh, in my role specifically um, in, in finance, uh, Greg Hilton here has put me in touch with um, a local firm, uh, the Hobbs Group, which they've been phenomenal doing a lot of non -pro, uh, uh, pro bono work, helping us out with um, kind of a mini audit going over all the work we've done so far um, and kind of looking over our books, make sure everything's you know good to go. And then also uh, with resources and connections, um, one of the introductions that uh, Dr. Brown and Dr. Robinson at the University of South Carolina made was the introduction into our, our first uh, grant. Um, so the first foundation that awarded us a grant was, was through the University of South Carolina. So 
while we, we may be based in, in the West, on the West Coast, uh, our volunteer base is, is throughout the United States. And we kind of try to take uh, advantage of, of our own local resources the most we can to help benefit the organization. Oh, everything, every day is different. Um, right now, it's a big push to uh, get new medical partners. Uh, we, we got to a point where we, we launched with only three medical partners, and it was very successful, and it got to the point where we had more demand than, than profiles, or more, there was less capacity than, than we wanted. So we needed to expand our network and get a little, a little larger, larger net. So we've been doing a little bit of a full court press on, on um, finding other partners um, throughout Africa. Uh, we, we've uh, expanded into Kenya, Malawi. Um, we were in Ethiopia, Uganda. Um, Uganda is actually a par uh, Palmetto Medical Initiative, uh, which is out of Charleston, South Carolina, which was another connection that the uh, yeah, USC startup uh, helped us with. So uh, th th there's been s several... Um, um, several recent pushes to, to expand our medical partner network and, and then once we have that kind of network in place then we'll go with the big, pre uh, big press to uh, get a larger user base and kind of build uh, more, more features into the site to make it more um, user friendly so you'll want to come back. Um, right now, it's, it's, it's been more about uh, building a user base, and we feel that a lot of the things that might, you know, help us financially early on could hinder us early on from a user standpoint. So we'd rather build a user base early on and then implement the features later on that could lead to more of a financially sustainable business model. Like, we, we plan to implement something called a tip jar that after your donation, we'll, we'll, we'll a little you know, pop-up box will come up that'll say something along the lines of, you know, 100% of your funds go directly to the patient that you just funded. Uh, if you'd like to consider donating to our overhead cost, please do so. We recommend X. And kind of the industry norm through conversations we've had with uh, nonprofit leaders is that 6% is kind of the expected of the amount of the donation. So once we kind of hit some sort of scale, 6% on top of, out of all the donations is, is pretty significant. That along with some corporate partnerships and gift matching and some other ideas that we kind of have in the pipeline, uh, we, we really think that we can get to a point of scale. However, it's getting to that point that's going to be difficult and that's going to require a lot of grants and funding and uh, large checks from, from high net worth individuals.